Welcome to completing a Stuart triple expansion engine. This one is part 23. Ordering the piston rings, changing the two support columns, bolting the engine to the box bed and working on the reversing handwheel. Earlier on in this series when I first tested the engine using compressed air it seemed to run ok. Even though there wasn't a slide valve in the steam chest for the intermediate cylinder the engine ran ok on the other two. But now it's time to fit some piston rings. In this clip I'm checking the diameter of each of the pistons. The high pressure cylinder is only 3 quarters of an inch in diameter. And the intermediate piston is 1 and a quarter inches in diameter. Just so I don't get it wrong when I'm on the phone ordering the piston rings I'm writing the sizes on each of the pistons. The low pressure cylinder just uses one piston ring and its diameter is 1 and 3 quarters of an inch. And when I found out the prices of these piston rings I was quite pleased that at least one of them had a ring already fitted. And the other good news is I already have three piston rings for a 3 quarters of an inch diameter piston. I bought this quite a long time ago from Blackgates Engineering for a project I was working on. I phoned Blackgates but they didn't have the right thickness of piston ring for the one and a quarter inch diameter cylinder so I phoned Stuart Models and ordered some from them. I could have machined the grooves to accommodate the Blackgates piston rings but I thought I'd keep it original and buy Stuart parts. The next job is very simple, all I have to do is switch around these two support columns. One of them has a special fitting to support the reversing mechanism. In the previous episode, to stop the nuts from working loose, I painted them over with some green paint, but I didn't bother with these two because I need to swap them over, which is what I'm doing now. There is a hole through this column to support the bearing for the hand wheel. I used my scriber to make sure it was at 90 degrees before I tightened up the nut. And that's another job out of the way. I couldn't resist rotating the flywheel, just to observe the poetry in motion of a triple expansion engine crankshaft machined from one piece of metal. The man who built this engine was a very good engineer. I think though, as he was building this engine he started to get bored. And why am I saying this? Well some of the parts are not made as well as others. And one or two errors have crept in in certain areas, but this is not a problem. It will work perfectly when I finish with it. The best and safest way to work on this engine so I don't damage it is to mount it onto its box bed. I'm doing this using machine screws so I can quickly remove them if I need to. I think though when the engine is finished I'll use proper hexagon bolts. That's one side fitted, the other side only has one bolt in it. I could carefully drill the casting inside the base of the air pump and then I could use another bolt down into the box bed. But to be perfectly honest I don't think it's going anywhere. I already have a beautiful example of one of these, completely finished by a man called Ronnie Mall, and that lives in a glass case and it looks beautiful. I think it's time to start thinking about mounting the reversing gear. Here's the long common shaft that supports the operating levers, which we'll all need firmly fitting to this shaft. With the intermediate and low pressure cylinder block in place on top of the columns, I thought I'd fit a couple of nuts, one at each side to hold it in place so it doesn't accidentally drop off and fall on the floor. This is side one, and this is side two. If you haven't seen any previous episodes, the brass parts at the end of the cylinder block are only temporary fittings which will allow me to adjust the position of the slide valve relative to the eccentrics on the crankshaft. Three of the levers are quite simple, they just operate the expansion links. This one though has to have a bearing in the centre. I will make it from phosphor bronze and it will be cross drilled and threaded to accept the reversing shaft that connects to the hand wheel. And here's the hand wheel. I forgot to check what the camera was looking at when I filmed this shot. I don't like this hand wheel much, in fact I think I'm going to replace it with a commercial casting. This one is quite clumsily machined and compared to the one on my other triple expansion engine it has very little in the way of style. By showing my other triple expansion engine you can see what I mean. I think this reversing lever looks much better but I would really prefer a cast one. Tomorrow I will phone Blackgates Engineering and ask my friend Matt what sizes they do.
Over now to the milling machine, there are a couple of things I need to do. One is to fit a drill chuck into the spindle and move the rotary table's position from the horizontal to the vertical. I slacken off the two allen bolts, raise the machine into the vertical position, tap it with a soft hammer to locate it and make sure it's in the correct position. Then I just re-tighten the two allen bolts. Fitted to the milling table, this rotary table can be moved forward and backwards and left to right. And the first thing I do with the rotary table when using it for drilling or milling is centralise it under the spindle. The way I do it is possibly not the correct way but it's very quick and it works. In this case I open the jaws of the rotary table chuck slightly more than the diameter of the drill chuck. Then I carefully tighten the rotary table chuck very gently as I move it in position using the two hand wheels on the table of the milling machine. If I don't have the drill chuck fitted then I use the actual quill of the milling machine. That's the bit in the middle where the R8 collets fit. All I have to do now is fit the hand wheel into the rotary table chuck then move the position of the rotary table using the hand wheel on the milling machine's table so I can drill four equally spaced holes at 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees. I'm using a centre drill for this and I do not go all the way through, otherwise the drill will collide with the chuck jaws. When I drill all the way through with the twist drill, I refit the hand wheel in the chuck for each hole so that the drill doesn't collide with the jaws. In this clip I'm on the Myford lathe, I thought I'd use that because I haven't done much work on it and I need to get used to it. I've pressed the part into position using the tailstock chuck and when I spin it up it's quite true. All I'm basically doing is deburring the inside edge where the twist drill broke through all four of the holes. As the part is lightly held in a very small chuck in the Myford I'm taking it easy whilst I'm doing the cutting and eventually the job is done. I've temporarily fitted the freshly drilled hand wheel in position I haven't cleaned it up but I don't like it, it's too small and it doesn't look right being made from brass. In fact the entire mechanism for the reversing screw which isn't cut on the shaft yet there isn't sufficient clearance between the shaft and the lever. The lever can only slide back and forth but of course on the shaft it swings. I think that's about it for now. I'd just like to say that the government are relaxing the lockdown rules very shortly and apparently you will be able to hug people, which is very odd because I never did that before. But anyway, it's something new to try, I suppose. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.